guys ever seen anything like that? It was crawling right here in the sand. I've never seen anything like that in my life. It kind of has like a scorpion look. It's definitely using its tail like a scorpion, but it's got six legs. I'm guessing some kind of larva with those big pincher face things. Please leave a comment down below if you ever seen anything like that. I'm really curious. Hello. <laughs> I'm uh, what's up guys? Check this out. Ooh, fan hitting things. Halo, Halo just had a fresh shed. But naturally I had to show her off because anytime an animal's shedding around here, it's a great time to share now. Right after fresh shed, who doesn't like seeing a freshly shed snake? Probably a lot of people. Here's what's going on today, guys. First, let's get let's get Halo out. Just blew that fly out of the sky. So Halo is not the most giant retic in the world, but she's just muscle, pound for pound muscle, because she's so heavy compared to like how big she is physically. She's dense. Her weight is just... In fact, you know what? Why don't you guys... Well, let's do this. Leave a comment down below. Take a guess as to how much you think Halo weighs. And then in the next video, we'll go upstairs and we'll weigh her and we'll see how many of you guys are right. Here's what we're doing. I'm gonna clean all the snakes. We're gonna go to Moonstone Beach with the family. That's also the first place I ever flew my drone, so I'm gonna fly my drone there again and see if I can't get better footage than the first time ever flying a drone. And then we're gonna come back here and we're gonna do an update on all the Blood Python babies and see how they're doing. Sound like a good day? Sounds like a good day to me. Fly must die. clean up here so I'm gonna go get changed for the beach and I'll see you guys there but don't forget when we get back blood pythons Moonstone Beach Look at that blue sky back there. Not a day goes by when I'm not thankful that we can be in heat, hot, any day of the summer, and real quickly just drive over to the beach and be like, it's time to chill out a little bit. Mm. Funny thing is, I was actually supposed to be in Daytona right now. I was booking my flight the day before Dave came. If you missed the video with Dave, you should go back and watch. That was a great video. I was about to book my ticket, and then I called Jesse, and I was like, dude, do you guys, how badly do you guys need me? Because I really want to film with Dave, and Dave was supposed to go to Daytona too, but he decided to go to Pomona instead. And I guess some people are upset with him for doing that. And uh, now the reason I'm not going to Daytona is also because of Dave. So now the youth people that are upset at Dave for not going to Daytona can also be upset at Dave for me not going to Daytona. Just, just kidding. Sorry. Sorry, Dave. That's not the real reason. The real reason is that Hillary's got a very important doctor appointment on Monday coming up. I just didn't want her to stress out about having to have somebody watch the kids and do all that stuff and try and make it to her doctor appointment. So I just, I stayed back. Jesse completely understood. And I'm sorry for you folks that were hoping to see me in Daytona. I'm definitely gonna make it next year, but I'll see you guys in Tinley for sure. And I'm gonna go to the San Jose show this weekend, coming up, this next weekend. So I've never been to San Jose show, but my buddy Jeff said I could put some animals at his table and I, I figure Hillary's not working, so I should go. They call it Moonstone Beach because you can find moonstones here, supposedly. Yeah. Have, have you ever found a moonstone here? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? No, I've like looked it up to see like what they look like before they're polished. And I'm gotten like, I haven't really gotten anywhere with it. But, see like, I think I don't think it looks like this. Oh. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> I just like the pretty rocks. Hey Eli. What? What do you know? I know. Chameleon. 
What about chameleons? That they have sticky hands and they have a young tongue yeah. and that's why no. <laughs> hey Moose, what do you know? <laughs> hey Noah. What? What do you know? I know. Sea glass. What about sea glass? That it's at the sea and it's glass and that's all I know. What? That's all you know about sea glass. And it, and um, it can be different colors, and that's all I know. Really, what is it special about sea glass? It's different than other glass. Um, that it's found in wild. What? What is? Is sea glass sharp? No. Why not? I don't know. You don't know why it's not sharp? Really? Because the ocean comes and rubs it and rubs it and tumbles it and tumbles it until it's smooth. Oh. So I got a challenge for you guys. After you're done watching this video, after we go back and check out the blood pythons, I want you guys to go outside, pick up a rock, and look at it. Maybe look under a big rock, find some life. Somebody's calling me. Brandon, I'll call you back. The idea is to get up and do something anything. Relish in the fact that you can get up and do something. Even if, the, even if the wheelchair yourself out of the house, the fact that you can get up and then you're not stuck here like a rock, unable to move without outside forces. Some people say that they think all of everything in your reality is predetermined and no matter what you do you're gonna end up going the same way. It's all predestined. Like you're a rock sitting on a beach waiting for the ocean tide to come and boil you around and move you to wherever it decides you're gonna go. I disagree. I say I'm not like a rock. I am not like a stone sitting on a beach waiting to get tossed around by the surf. I have the power to get up and make a choice to move forward and do something that I want to do. I can get out and I can walk around and I can flip these rocks, I can move these rocks, look under them, look for other signs of life underneath rocks and not be a rock myself just waiting for the ocean to come and blow me along. I want you to take that same knowledge and Use it to your advantage and go outside and willfully do something. Something good for yourself. Get outside. Enjoy nature. Just a little bit. Nothing hard. Just take advantage of the fact that you are alive. Not like one of these rocks here. Oh, can I say something? Uh, yeah. I just want to let everybody know that I really, really appreciate all the support um, regarding the video we did about anxiety and it just like was really touching that so many people reached out and it's really crazy how many people are struggling with anxiety and so I'm kind of determined to get mine figured out so that I can give you guys tips Is of what's working with me. Uh, no, that's not sea glass. But um, I'm feeling so much better. I really think that the antibiotics just messed my system up and just like exacerbated everything, messed up my hormones. Um, I went and had acupuncture done yesterday and she did some muscle testing and gave me some um, homeopathic or some uh, like natural medicine to take uh, for a little bit. And then Monday I have another appointment with a really, really good naturopathic doctor. So I'm really optimistic that we're gonna kind of get things figured out. But I just wanted to thank you guys so much. Like the support was amazing. And um, it also made me realize that some people have it way worse than I do. And I'm just so sorry for those of you who struggle with it and I will tell you any tips and tricks that help me because I want to help you and um, yeah it's, it's something that you can, you can, uh, you can get a hold of I, I really believe you can beat it so yeah thank you guys so much I was actually planning to talk about that for you <laughs> while we were here so it's funny you wanted to sit down and do it yourself well yeah. I think I'm just gonna move in here. What do you guys think? <laughs>
All right, let's go check out some blood pythons. We got nine of them to show you. Look at that. <laughs> what are you doing? This is number one. He's the first male. He's a male normal. And he's the biggest of the bloods. He's had the most meals. He's grown the fastest. He's spoken for by my buddy Louis Sai. There he is. He's doing some funky pose for you. I don't know what's going on there exactly, but uh, that's what he's doing. <laughs> he's, oh, that's funny. Yeah, so he's the biggest. I don't know if we'll get him to flatten out. He's pretty... Uh, Come on, dude, you want to flatten out a little bit for us? What do you say? What do you say? Do a little make your body normal, maybe? I've gotten them all to chill out pretty well. They're starting to melt. I mean, they're still baby defensive blood pythons. And, of course, I hadn't done any updates because they still haven't shed. So you see, these things hatched out back in April, and they still haven't had their first shed. One of them is starting to go into shed, I noticed, this morning. So go ahead and pay attention and tell me which one you think is going into shed. We'll go by number. This is number one. Male normal, looking good, the biggest of the group, so big that he just barely fits in my little macro shot there. Great thing about blood pythons when you're showing them off is they, they like to just sit there and kind of hang out. So there he is, male number one. Here's another male normal. These guys are going to soak up my little pad here because they are, they're wet. I've been keeping on water, as many of you may have noticed. They've been doing great. Everybody's eating and everybody's uh, probably going to freak out a little bit being out underneath these... Uh, these lights, but they're looking fantastic. There's a uh, male number two. Here's male number three. He's doing a little, uh, he's doing something. What's up, bud? If you got, if you just handle these guys real slowly and gently, chances are they're not gonna get defensive on you and they're just gonna hang out and kind of chill. You can kind of tell he's had the least amount of meals, but he's he's hungry. He's ready to eat tonight. I'll probably, I'll probably thought I'll wrote in for him as soon as we're done with this video. Look at him go. He's cool. He's curious. He's hungry. He's male number three. Here you have male number four, the last male normal. He's got some nice uh, darkness going on on his back. He's getting these blacks kind of coming in that are outlined in his pattern. I don't know how they're coming in because he hasn't even had his shed yet. None of these snakes have shed yet. It still just blows my mind. He's cool though. You, you want to try and line up with the, uh, let's see if we can get you to line up with the triple B snake. Let me think about that. Is it possible? Probably not. No, I'm, I'm, I'm no. Yeah, the, the hair is flying out all over the place. I, <laughs> if I keep wearing hats like this, I might not have any more, so I gotta let it fly while it's flying. Still got my little hair tie. If I lose this thing, this stuff's coming off, dude. Take it easy, take it easy. There's male number five. This is the Matrix. Obviously, it was a male heavy clutch. Uh, but yes, the first Matrix male. None of these snakes have bit me yet as I'm taking them out, just to, just to let you know. Uh, I'm not hooking them at all. I'm just going in there, picking them up from behind, and they're not biting me whatsoever, so... Just something to note, not getting bit. It's easy to achieve not getting bit if you're just slow and careful and not freaking them out. They won't, they won't bite you. You just gotta be on their, on their terms kinda and think about how they might be feeling and they won't bite you, right? Watch, and bam, I get bit. That, wouldn't that be freaking hilarious? No, see, he's just coming to say hello. He's just coming for some chin pets. Huh, you just want a little chin pet, didn't you? It's one of one of these, a little scratchy, scratchy, scratchy right on your chin chin. Little upside down chin pet, huh? That's all you needed. Woo! <laughs> Alright, dude. Uh, male number five, the first matrix. Male number six and the second matrix and the last male. So we got three females after this. But yep, um, male, matrix, looking beautiful. He's also got some size on him. Uh, compared to the other ones, he's probably second biggest. Maybe he might even be, he might have surpassed the other male in size, actually. Oh, hey there. Don't freak out, bud. We're good, we're good. I'm coming from behind. He's like, usually when you take me out, there's not all these bright lights, dude. And you're kind of freaking me out with all this stuff. Yeah, look at you go. You're a beautiful, beautiful snake. Nobody's trying to deny that. Nobody's going to take that away from you, okay? You're beautiful. We all know it. Male number six, everybody. There we go. The first female. Female normal, and there she is. She's uh, looking special, looking chunky, looking like a little rotation is rotating. Are you in for the rotation, sweetheart? Are you coming home for this? She's like, dude, leave me alone. I'm stressing. You're stressing me out. Stop it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just wanted to show you off for all the folks at home. Take it easy. Take it easy. All right, everybody. Male number... Female number one. You know, we haven't really been showing you guys the bellies too much. You want to see a belly? There's some belly. 
She's like, no, we don't want to see belly. There's some belly for you. Oh, quick belly shot. Look at all the water we got building up on this table. Look at how beautiful this snake is. This is female number two, and she's a matrix, and she's all mine, all mine. She's staying here. She's not going anywhere. Huh, you're hanging out. She was the most feisty. If you guys remember, the, those of you that watched the uh, video when Travis and I were splitting up the females and males and all that, she was the feistiest, and she's still got that little feist feist. Woo, you see that? See that? little twitchy? little twitchy, but she's good, though. She's good. If, if She's just freaking out because she's like, she's, I'm, are you going to handle me or not? But see, if you just hold her, then she's totally cool. You know, I mean, she's, she's keyed up a little bit and ready to strike. But again, keep in mind, this was the most defensive snake out of the entire clutch. And I can hold her. And eventually, I know that with regular handling like this, she's going to be just as chill as mom. Still a little flinchy, of course, but eventually she will be just as chill as her mother. So... There she is. She's beauty. And she's she's mine. Sorry! Alright, this is the last snake. Snake number nine, female number three. And this girl is actually uh, another matrix. So that last girl is a matrix too. Not that it matters because she's staying here. It doesn't matter what she is to you guys. Um, this girl is actually already spoken for. My friend Corey. And yeah. She's beautiful. She's only had a few meals. Um, she is eating though. They're all eating, and just waiting on them to shed. Someday this year, I imagine, uh, they will shed. Did you guys happen to uh, pay close attention there to see which one is definitely going into shed? There was one of those snakes that is definitely going into shed. Leave a comment down below. It'll let me know which one you saw. All right, guys, that's it for us today. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you had a good time. hope we inspired you a little bit. hope you laughed. hope you cried. Hope that uh, your day's better because you watched this video. And hopefully I get to see some of you guys in San Jose this weekend. I've got a lot of updates that I didn't talk about right now because I feel like we're running out of time. I'm just going to have to make another video this week. And I will do that. All right? Make sure to watch Triple B TV this week. We've got Hurt Baton going on. Also, mm, if you missed last video, again, I hate to be broken record, but you should go back and watch it because it was probably one of the better videos I've done this year. Aloha.